Hi, I'm Paweł Spechalski and I am slightly into 3D printing. I mean, I like to design, I like to print, I know how to print and I know my ways around the filaments for the 3D printers. And what I have on my workbench today are the three, maybe two and a half workhorses of the current generations of the filaments we use in the RC hobby. I have the PLA, I have the TPU with really unknown composition and I have the PETG. PLA, super simple to print, uh, really probably the simplest filament ever, very stiff, very rigid prints, not very super tough, but comparing to the others, it's also not super whimsy. And if you want printed something just because you need something printed and it doesn't have to require you, for example, the temperature resistance, you probably are really like good to go with the PLA because the PLA is just awesome. I print majority of my stuff with the PLA. Then, then we have the flex filament, the TPU filament, which is just, well, it's the rubber. It's almost a printable rubber. Maybe it's not as elastic as the rubber. There are many flavors, many ways. And if you want something that is just, well, bending uh, during the impact and it's kind of elastic, like for example, uh, what I have over here. Well, for example, this part, which is an elastic mount for the camera for the drone, the TPU is just for you. If, however, you want something slightly more stiff than the TPU, well, actually almost as stiff as the PLA, uh, but something that can sustain a higher temperature above 100 degrees or something, then probably you are really good to go with the PETG. It's uh, comparing to PLI. Yeah, I know people say that PETG is more resistant. It's stiffer, but because it's not stiffer, it's elastic and it will survive more. Maybe yes, maybe no. I'm not really finding this thing much more resistant to crashes because still it will delaminate just like the, the PLA. However, it is the weather conditions resistance. It will not just dissolve itself uh, during the one one year uh, on the outside and it is temperature resistant which is a good thing however however do you know that there actually is uh, something else that somewhere in between the PETG and the uh, TPU filaments uh, that's super tough super resistant to crashes super hard to destroy relatively soft can be bended but it's not really a rubber because it will not automatically go to the previous shape and is also food safe so you can print uh, things that you will be using during eating Ta -da. today today let's talk for a while about this thing which is called a pp what is this PP? It's the polypropylene. If you want to know the chemical properties of the polypropylene, just go to the Wikipedia, find yourself an article about this topic and read it. From what is important for us in the RC hobby is that the polypropylene is extremely durable filament. After you will print something with the polypropylene, you can crush it, you can bend it, you can hit it with the hammer, it has a lot of chances of surviving and it is stiffer than the TPU so your parts will not uh, it's not rubber it's not really rubbery it's more like I don't know it, it behaves like a polypropylene and uh, a lot of polypropylene uh, things you might have at home because for example when you buy the distilled water or the solution you put in your car for your windshield this is usually in the polypropylene uh, polypropylene uh, bottle, uh, very resistant to shock, hard to kill, good liar adhesion, it really sticks to other polypropylenes amazingly and when printed it's extremely hard to, you know, to, to rip the print uh, on, the, on the layers and if you print something with this thing it really has the pretty high chances of surviving whatever the treatment you will put this thing into and uh, if we go outside of the rc hobby it's also uh, food safe it's non-toxic it's not solvable with the chemicals you can use it to store chemicals if you really really want to i don't know if you want to and uh, and what yeah bottles uh, stops, uh, enclosures, or anything that does not have to be very 
Solid, rigid, might deform slightly, but should survive a lot of treatment. Would you like to see an example? Example number one is the small box with the 3D printed thread I printed for the uh, ear stops. Uh, you know, the things that you put in your, inside your ears so you do not uh, have to worry about other people shouting near to you to protect your hearing. Comparing to the PETG and the PLA, it's much more elastic and comparing to the TPU, it's less elastic and it actually makes sense to put a thread on this thing uh, to survive it. You can, if you, if you can carry alcohol in it, this for example. If not this, uh, then for example, we can take a look at this strap I just designed today and printed with the polypropylene. So on this side, we have a small... Uh, small latch on this side we have a small hole we flip this thing 180 degrees flip uh, push uh, one into the other and it got really nice and solid lock that does not uh, want to separate easily however when you want to you just squeeze it tightly and remove uh, the pin from the from the hole so a lot of possibilities of things inside of the drones, maybe not the drone frames itself, but really opens a lot of possibilities. However, however, printed, printing with the polypropylene is not simple, is not easy and requires you to have at least a few challenges solved. The problem number one of the polypropylene is that polypropylene does not stick to anything else than the polypropylene. One example, um, I have the CA glue, I have this 3D printed device. Let me put some of the CA glue on this thing and then let me put this thing here. Okay. And let's close it because we don't want the smell to go into my lungs. Uh, now the accelerator for the CA glue. So in theory, it should be bonded together. If this thing was the PLA, both parts would be really like stuck together for the eternity. With the polypropylene, look what happened. It's just separated without having actually almost any resistance. It's super hard to glue the polypropylene to anything else that is not a polypropylene. And this makes the first layer adhesion to your printing bed super hard. It will not stick to anything, maybe to a satin steel, uh, you know, the made steel plate, if you have something like that. But if not, then your only option is to use this thing, uh, polypropylene tape, uh, packing tape. Uh, you don't know, majority of the packing tapes are made from the polypropylene uh, with the clear glue held by magic to the, to the polypropylene. You have to apply a small, short, single layer of the polypropylene tape on your printing surface and then print on it and then it will stick super super stick to the polypropylene unfortunately when you will want to separate the print from the uh, from the bed unfortunately it will rip the polypropylene tape from the bed so you will be left with the traces of the of the tape on the bottom side of your print but at least it sticks the second problem with the polypropylene is that it likes to warp if you are used to printing with the PLA or the TPU, the warping is really not a problem because those materials does not warp. Even the PETG does not really warp. If you started 3D printing uh, before the era of the PLA with the ABS plastics, you might know what warping is and warping sucks. Every time uh, the, your print is not really cooling uh, slowly enough and on the equal rate everywhere, uh, the big difference of the dimensions when the thing is hot and when it's cold causes uh, generated forces that just rip the print from your printing bed. In this case, uh, the bond is so high to the polypropylene tape that it will just rip the glue from the printing surface like i have over here very nice well not very nice very small detail uh that even although it's only one centimeter high the difference during the cooling the cooldown of the thing was so high that it warped 
and I had to finish the surface with the knife to improve the looks of uh, of this element and how to improve yeah, how to solve the problem of warping unfortunately there is only one good solution to warping in case of the polypropylene because really making a bigger area of the adhesion uh, adding some brim it's not really helping much because just the brim will separate the polypropylene tape from the bed the only solution, the only good solution is to have an enclosure for your 3D printed. It has to print hot because the minimal temperatures for the polypropylene are around 220, but even up to 250 and higher. And unfortunately, you have to also have the heated bed because this thing likes to really be printed on the hot bed with around 95 to 100 degrees and the enclosure to make the temperature uh, during the, the cool down phase to drop down equally in all the elements and uh, get rid of, prevent from drafts that will just cool one side faster than the other and cause the warping. When you have the good printer and when you have the something that encloses your printed, like for example in the picture you are seeing, it's just a photography tent. It's enough. It's enough. It really helps a lot. Maybe not the perfect solution, but it helps uh, for the uh, for the warping of the polypropylene. Then you are good to go with this amazing plastic. Um, the final problem with polypropylene is bloody expensive. It's unfortunately bloody expensive and this spool of the filament, which is around one kilogram, costs 45 euros. Comparing to the PLA, it's three times more expensive, but offers some of the features that the PLA does not really offer to you. I think that's all for today. I hope we all learn something new and for your next advanced print when you need something tough that will survive the beating that's slightly more rigid than the TPU and less rigid than the PLA, you might consider the PP, the polypropylene. Uh, by the way, with correctly designed arms, you can print drones from the polypropylene. How, how awesome is that? Thank you very much for watching. Until the next one. Bye-bye.